Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cooper, we're here on a motion filed by the prosecutor's office. That motion is to revoke bond. I've had an opportunity to review the motion. I did not see any filed response. Did you file any response, Mr. Church? I, I did not. I, I was just served the motion late last week. And unfortunately, as the court's likely aware, I've been in court uh, all this week. Ms. Brooker, your motion. Your Honor, um, as the information in the motion states, um, we have a documented report from the Clare County, Clare County Sheriff's Department of Mr. Cooper having contact with the victim in this case, who is the protected party. Um, he's had bond conditions in place prohibiting him from having contact with her since the beginning of this case in 2022. Um, so we are asking this court to sign a bench warrant uh, and revoke his bond um, pending trial. Church. So, Your Honor, a few things. Um, one, I, I think um, that the alleged victim may be logged into Zoom and be present, um, and, and she may want to address the court on this. Secondly, uh, you know, our, our response to this, I mean, we, we don't dispute that there was contact that occurred. This is a situation in which there was confusion on Mr. Cooper's part. He had a case out of, uh, out of here from 2020. There's also a case that arose out of Clare County. In Clare County, there was a no contact provision. They went to the court in Clare County and that no contact provision was removed. Um, he did not understand and recognize that there was still a no contact provision here. Um, and that's again, why I believe the alleged victim is present. And I would ask the court to consider talking to her about it. I don't think there was anything um, in regards to the contact that's alleged to have been violent or even unwanted. Um, they again they just simply didn't present. realize she is not present. Okay. Um, again, I, I think this is a situation where they, they just did not realize this provision was still out there um, prohibiting that contact. The court I, finds I, you in criminal contempt based upon those statements, Mr. Cooper. You're entitled to a hearing if you want to challenge the allegations, but it does not appear that you're challenging that you were in contact with Ms. Dimizone, however I pronounce her last name. So, Mr. Church, I'll provide you a hearing, and we'll have it right now if you want to have that hearing. Um, but I intend to find Mr. Cooper in indirect criminal contempt of court based upon a clear violation, and I do not accept any confusion that was suggested or implied. This case has been pending for years. It's very serious in nature, as Mr. Cooper is well aware. He's charged with a 10-year felony as a habitual fourth. He knows very well what the charges are and what the maximum punishment is. It's also very clear to me that there has been multiple problems on bond. And so with all of that backdrop, I do not intend to ignore this or excuse it as a mistake or misunderstanding because it does not appear to me to be that. And so my intention is to impose a short period of jail as a result of the violation, if in fact I find Mr. Cooper guilty. Again, fundamentally, based on what you've told me, Mr. Trush, I don't expect that you will want a hearing because you've acknowledged that there's been a violation. But if you want a hearing, you're entitled to it. My intention would be to put Mr. Cooper in jail for probably 10 days as a result of the violation to re-encourage him to understand the exact provisions that he is in violation of and that he is bound by. I would then intend to reinstate mine after that 10 day period. If you're willing to accept that, that's fine. If you're not, we're gonna have a hearing. But that's my intention because it is absolutely clear to me that Mr. Cooper was aware despite your protestation or his protestation that you misunderstood. This matter is not acceptable to the court for so many reasons. So, Mr. Trush, did you need a moment to talk to Mr. Cooper about his desires or his um, plans going forward? So, Your Honor, if I could make a suggestion to the court. Um, and, and... Well, you can't make a suggestion to me, but you can certainly take me up on my offer to talk with your client or just proceed however you want to proceed. But I'm not going to take suggestions at this juncture. And, and Your Honor, what... What I meant is in, in terms of how to proceed going forward, um, it was our intentions today to offer a plea in this case. And I would suggest to the court uh, that in terms of procedurally how to proceed, if, if the court would consider setting the sentencing and the contempt at the same time, I think we could address both of those matters. And it would give us an opportunity to present the court with some of the information that I think, again, not necessarily in terms of um, I, again, not necessarily in terms of the contact, but how the court should respond to that. Well, I know how I'm going to respond to it. I've already told you how I'm going to respond to it. And today is the day for the motion. 
there is no question that there's been a violation. The only question is how I should proceed. And again, you can make your arguments and I'll hear them. The prosecutor can make her arguments and I'll hear them. I would imagine the prosecutor is going to ask for more than what I told you I intend. And I imagine you'll ask for less. I'll balance those things and ultimately come to my conclusion. But today's the day that's going to happen. If you want to also enter a plea agreement today, that's fine. But my intention remains the same. Again, understanding that I'll give you the opportunity to argue. Your Honor, then I would ask um, that we be permitted to tender that plea. And then again, I I would ask the court to check. I, I think that the alleged victim is now in the waiting room. I would ask the court to check on that as well. She is in the waiting room, but at this point, Mr. Church, I don't intend to hear from her because at this point, this is not an evidentiary hearing. And based on what you've told me so far, nothing, none of what she would say would have any effect on anything because even if, for example, I believed and Ms. Gidnazone told me that she thought there was something dropped, that does not make any difference because it was not dropped. And there should have been no understanding, misunderstanding of that on Mr. Cooper's behalf. And so while I understand that you would want to offer her, this is not an evidentiary hearing. You've not demanded one and you've made concessions that there was violations. And so anything that I would hear from Ms. Gidnazone would ultimately not likely have any impact on my exercise of discretion. And so while I recognize you would want me to hear from her, I'll hear from her as the law requires at a sentencing hearing, but not until. Your Honor, I, I don't want to lose my job. How, how, is there any way I can go upon this? Mr. Cooper, I'm job? not going to hear from you right now. I'm going to hear from your attorney for a variety of reasons, most importantly, which is you're still facing life in prison for this underlying offense, both underlying offenses. And so until I hear whether or not you plan to enter pleas and then what the nature of those pleas are, I'm not going to hear from you. I understand why you would want to be heard, but I'm not going to hear from you irrespective of that desire right now. Mr. Trush, what is the plan in terms of a plea offer that's been proposed? So, Your Honor, we are in receive a plea offer where if Mr. Cooper pled to an added count two possession of meth, I'm sorry, pled to count two possession of methamphetamine and added count four domestic violence uh, first offense, the uh, remainder of the complaint would be dismissed. So that would be yeah. a domestic violence 93 day $500 maximum. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Is that right, Mr. Trush? That is correct. Mr. Cooper, did you hear the terms of that plea agreement? Yes, Your Honor. So how you wanted to proceed is by accepting the terms of that plea agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Here's your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Cooper, under this plea agreement, you're offering to plead guilty to count two, which is entitled controlled substance possession of methamphetamine. That offense is a felony offense, and the maximum potential punishment for that felony is up to 10 years in the state prison system and or a fine of up to $15,000. You're also offering to plead guilty to what's called an added count four. That added count four is known as domestic violence. Domestic violence is a misdemeanor offense punishable by a maximum of 93 days in jail and or a fine of up to $500. If you plead guilty to those two offenses, possession of methamphetamine and domestic violence, the prosecutor would then dismiss count one, the assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder or by strangulation. Count three, controlled substance possession of the controlled substance buprenorphine, as well as the habitual offender fourth offense notice, which as I've stated before, could have the effect of elevating those two first offenses up to life in prison. Are you aware of the terms of the plea agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Did you want to take advantage of it by entering pleas to count two and count four? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the maximum penalties that you can face for possession of meth methamphetamine and domestic violence? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the benefit of the plea agreement that you did in having count three, count one, and the habitual fourth dismissed? Yes, Your Honor. If you plead guilty, Mr. Cooper, you will no longer have any automatic right to appeal. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So what that means is following any plea, your appeal rights are limited. You would have to ask the Court of Appeals for permission to appeal. It's not an automatic right. Do you understand that? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. As to the count two possession of methamphetamine then, what is your plea? I'm sorry, Church, is it no contest or uh, guilty, Church? Well, guilty is what was described to me, and guilty would simply mean you tell me why you're guilty of the offenses. Is that what you intend to do? 
Yes, Your Honor. How do you plead to domestic violence in count four? Guilty. If you plead guilty, you also give up all of your current trial rights, including the right to trial itself. Those trial rights include the right to be tried by a jury of your peers, the right to be presumed innocent until you're proven guilty, and the right to have the prosecutor bear the burden of proving your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. At your trial, you'd have a right to remain silent, not have that silence used against you, and you would have the right to testify at trial if you wanted to. Further, at your trial, you would have a right to have the witnesses against you appear and to see here and question them. And you would have the right to have the court order any witnesses on your behalf to appear at trial. But if you enter a guilty plea, you lose all of those important trial rights. Are you aware of that? Yes, Your Honor. And because you're giving up your right to the trial itself, you also necessarily give up the right to challenge other things that could have happened at the trial. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. That was a question. Sorry. Do you have any questions that last morning? What was the last part? I'm cutting out. I'm do sorry. Do you have any questions about that last warning that I just provided? No, Your Honor. Outside of the plea agreement, has anyone promised you anything to get you to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Has anyone threatened you in any way to make you feel like you have to plead guilty? No, sir. Are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Yes, sir. Is it your choice to plead guilty? Yes, sir. The court notes then that the prosecutor charges that this happened on or about February 23rd of 2022. Does that sound accurate? Yes. Sir. On that date, were you located here in Otsego County? Yeah. And on that date, did you knowingly or intentionally possess the controlled substance methamphetamine? Yes, Your Honor. Did you know it was methamphetamine? Yes. And did you have any legal authority to possess it at that time? They obtained it from my lot container, Your Honor. My question to you was, did you have any legal authority to possess it at that time? Did they gather my substance? No, no, no. Did you have any legal authority to possess the substance at that time? I, I believe so, sir. I, hey, you you're think on, you I had think legal he can authority hear. to possess methamphetamine? I'm sorry, I can't understand you. It's a bad connection. So let me speak up then. The question that I asked is, did you have any legal authority to possess the methamphetamine on that day? No, Your Honor. I misunderstood your question. That's okay. Is it also accurate that on that date you were or had been in a dating relationship with Yes. Did you commit an assault upon her while you were in that dating relationship? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm supposed to say from here, Your Honor. Well, it's pretty simple, Mr. Cooper. You're offering to plead guilty to domestic violence. I'm asking you if you committed domestic violence. So either you did or you didn't. I, I, I admit that I uh, there was a domestic violence. What was a domestic violence? A, a disagreement. What disagreement? Upon uh, us being homeless. What did you do that makes you think I should find you guilty of domestic violence? We got into an argument, Your Honor. And I don't want to hear about what we did. I want to hear about what you did. I, I raised my voice and started yelling at her. Do you think that raising your voice is domestic violence? I, I, that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what the law provides, Mr. Cooper because it's relatively clear, and I'm relatively clear, the reason I sound rather perturbed is because I am, because I think you clearly understand what domestic violence is and what it's not. What domestic violence is, is an assault. An assault cannot happen by accident. And an assault and or an assault and battery is where you physically touch against somebody's will that person. So did you do that or did you not do that? I, I, I did not touch Brooke in a, in a harmful manner that day, Your Honor. Why you always lying? Oh my God, stop lying.
rejected plea agreement, Mr. Cooper, because it's clear to me that you are not acknowledging that you are guilty. If you're not acknowledging that you're guilty, you can't plead guilty. And so I will not accept your plea agreement. What I'm going to do instead is issue the findings that I've already indicated, which is based upon the statements that have been made on the open court record so far, I find you an indirect criminal contempt. And what that means is I find that there's clear evidence that you're in violation of the bond order. That violation of the bond order gives the court two important and distinct possibilities. One distinct possibility is that I could cancel bond altogether. I choose not to do that. I choose instead to treat the violation of bond as ind indirect criminal contempt. When I choose to do that, that opens up the possibility for me to consider jail up to 93 days, but I do not consider that as the sanction. Based upon the history of non-appearances and prior bench warrants and the length of this case, based upon all of the things I've already stated, it's my view that 10 days of jail is appropriate. But before I finalize that sentence for the indirect criminal contempt that I found, I'm going to hear arguments from the attorneys. Then I'm going to impose that sentence with the indication, ultimately, that after that sentence is done, you will be have your bond reinstated on the 10th day after I issue the sentence. Ms. Brooker, did you wish to articulate any reasoning in support of what you're asking for outside of what the court has suggested? Your, your uh, I, Honor, I, is there any way I can just plead guilty? You can in a moment once I hear from and address the other issue that we're here for, Mr. Cooper. Ms. Brooker, did you have anything further you wanted to argue or anything at all you wanted to argue on behalf of the people regarding how the court should exercise its discretion? No, Your Honor, I agree with the, what the court has proposed, and I'll just stand behind the statements and the motion. Mr. Church, did you have further articulations for the record regarding what you think I should do or why? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, so a, a lot has happened since this case has arose. The, the court has already kind of alluded to the timeline that this case is old and has been pending for a while. Uh, a lot has happened in that time period. Uh, Mr. Cooper has gone to and completed a rehab. He's gone to and completed some counseling in regards to relationships. Uh, I, I think that the court should take into account those things when looking at how to address this situation. Uh, again, a lot has changed since this has happened. He's fully employed. He's completed a substantial amount of counseling, frankly, probably the vast majority of the counseling the court would likely be seeking to impose on the underlying sentence. Uh, so again, I, I would just renew my request that the court withhold making a judgment as far as a sentence on this um, uh, until it can, you know, until we can effectuate that plea and be here for a complete sentencing on the underlying matter and address this issue to the court. Mr. Cooper, you're popping in and out of my screen. I need you to turn your video on. So the, the phone keeps going black and then I have to touch yeah. it. Mr. Cooper, a moment ago when I was speaking, you asked if you could consider continuing the plea. Is that what you wanted to do? Yes, Your Honor. Do you recall the nature of the plea agreement, the benefits to you, and the drawbacks? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions about any of those things before I hear more from you? No, Your Honor. So where we were at in the situation was I was asking you why I should find you guilty of domestic violence. Do you want me to find you guilty of domestic violence? Do I want you to find me guilty? Right. Do you want to take advantage of the plea agreement, which means I find you guilty of domestic violence? Yes, Your Honor. How should I find you guilty of domestic violence after what you told me on the open court record and under oath? I apologize. It's my, my criminal mentality. I just, it's, it's almost like a reflex, Your Honor. I apologize. So what actually happened? Well, we got into an argument and she pushed me and I pushed her away. So you're claiming self-defense? It was uh, more of an act of aggression than self-defense. So when you were actively being aggressive, is that what you mean? Yes, Your Honor. When you were being actively aggressive, did you physically put your hands on a person that you were in a dating relationship with? After, after a few things happened, we 
But ultimately, I, I was trying to comfort her, but yeah. I don't believe you. It was... It turned relatively... Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper, we're done with the plea proceeding. I will not accept waffling. And what I mean by waffling is you not accepting responsibility for what you're telling me. Uh, you are. It was and I don't care. Mr. Cooper, you need to stop and listen for a minute. I'm, I'm, it does I'm, not matter to me. It does not matter to me in one way or the other what you decide to do. You are entitled as a matter of constitutional principle to a jury trial, and I have it set for you. I'm going to get those dates set for you if that's what you continue to want. Or if you decide that you want to enter a guilty plea, we can go down that path. But I will never, not on this date or on any other date, accept a plea from you unless the terms of the plea are clear. And the terms of the plea can only be clear for a domestic violence offense if you tell me that you're guilty of domestic violence or intentionally striking somebody that you were in a dating relationship with or something similar that would meet the statutory definition. I am not going to permit a record to be clouded with your definitions or your insertion of words that don't make those things clear. And so in my discretion, I'm not going to continue to what I am going to do is impose sentence, as I've previously indicated. Your attorney is correct to suggest that I should take all sorts of things into account, I, and I do. More yes. specifically, Mr. Cooper, at sentencing, I would absolutely take into account if you have been and show me proof that you've been through counseling, because that would tend to mitigate any potential risk of harm to Mr. Ms. Goodison. But again, right now, I'm not finding you guilty of domestic violence, and I'm not finding you guilty of possession of methamphetamine. You remain not guilty on those matters because I have not accepted your pleas. That means you will decide how you want to proceed in the future. But again, based upon what is a clear bond violation, and because I found you in clear, indirect criminal contempt of court, it is my order that you will serve 10 days in the Otsego County Jail. You will turn yourself in today, which is the September 6, 2023. If you don't turn yourself in by no later than 4 p.m. today, then I'll consider that additional bond violation. And as you probably know from our discussion today, if there's an additional bond violation, then I will treat that on its own. An additional bond violation could mean that I revoke bond altogether, could mean that I raise bond, it could mean that I treat it as indirect criminal contempt. All of those things are possible and you should be aware of them. So 10 days is the order for the indirect criminal contempt. Upon the 10th day of your sentence, I will reinstate your bond, uh, subject to all prior conditions. Do you have any questions about those orders, Mr. Cooper? I need to fucking build my life for my fucking kid, man. Mr. Cooper, your choice. I can't lose a fucking job. And his mother, I was on the phone with like, so arrested for this incident, and they were both. Come on, you stay the fuck out of it, dude. Under the influence of, of drugs that day, that they said he was arrested for this domestic, Your Honor. All and right. I don't know who. And I'm not going to hear from you. This is not an open proceeding where you are entitled to come in and tell me anything because a, I don't know who you are, and b, this is not an open proceeding. This is a structured courtroom. The structured courtroom requires that I hear from a prosecutor, a defense attorney, and the defendant. I have heard from those individuals. So, ma'am, I'm not going to hear from you, despite your desire to be heard. Mr. Cooper, my order is what it is. You will have the choice to either follow it or not follow it. If you don't follow it, there likely will be repercussions, but you get to choose whether or not you follow it. If you follow that order, then it will be much more likely that I would consider different things in the future. If you don't follow it, it's likely that I consider other different things in the future because your ability to or willingness to comply with the bond conditions of the court makes a difference on a going forward. Your Honor. So that is your order. I just got him to go home. I'm his mother to attend him for court. All right. Ma'am, I'm speaking oh, over you on purpose. You don't know who you are, and you're not entitled to be heard um, on this court record. I Therefore, apologize. I'm not considering um, and I was said, gonna... I'm terminating the call oh, now with the order being clear. You need to turn yourself in by 4 o'clock p.m., Mr. Cooper. If you don't, then a further issue will come up. And again, I may act on an immediate basis if I hear information, don't turn yourself in by issuing a bench. With that, I'm removing Mr. Cooper and the individual no who will clearly not listen to the court direction. And Mr. Trush, I'm going to make then a further record. I'm not willing to have interruptions by unidentified individuals, not in this case and not in any case. 
And so again, I've issued my findings as far as indirect criminal contempt and my order. Did you wish to preserve for appellate review any further issues on that point before we break Mr. Church? Uh, no, Your Honor. I, I had intended to ask if I could ask Mr. Cooper some questions in regards to the potential plea, but I think that ship has kind of sailed. Ms. Brooker, did you wish to make any further statements for purpose of appellate review regarding anything the court has done so far? No, Your Honor. The court will issue that indirect criminal contempt finding then in a written order. I'll get that out to the attorneys today, and I'll also make sure and mail it to Mr. Cooper at his last known address. I expect that there will be reasonable follow-up between the attorneys uh, about the jail issue that I've just brought up. What I mean by that is my order was and is that Mr. Cooper turns himself in at the Otsego County Jail by no later than 4 o'clock p.m. today. If I find and hear by way of written motion, affidavit, or otherwise that he has not turned himself in on that occasion, I intend to take immediate action. The immediate action I would likely take is the issuance of a bench warrant for his arrest. I don't necessarily need to do that, but I'm telling the attorneys that is my plan if I have information from one of the attorneys that that has not happened. Because otherwise, I do not feel comfortable at all regarding Mr. Cooper's safety and particularly Ms. Gitta's own safety, especially given the clear bond violation that's happened recently and the history of this case that everyone is aware of. Do you have any questions regarding what I'm asking in that regard, Mr. Ms. Brooker? No, Your Honor. Do you, Mr. Church? No, Your Honor. The court will be in recess on this case today, and I'll remain open to both arraign Mr. Cooper if it's needed and or to conduct an additional plea hearing. But if it hasn't been made clear by everything that's happened so far today, counsel, I'm not going to waste time on a plea if it is a waste of time. If there's a plea that we can accomplish, it doesn't matter to me. But I'm not going to waste a lot of court time if ultimately Mr. Cooper is going to deny culpability when we get to the ultimate point. So hopefully you can have those conversations with him, Mr. Trush. Again, it doesn't matter to me if he has a trial or if he has a plea, but whatever he chooses needs to be clear. Before we in recess now.